this uh, this workshop is going to be recorded. So if you uh, miss something, we'll be able to share the recording afterwards. You can rewatch it and um, and uh, and yeah, this is it. This is all I have to say. Uh, without any further ado, I would love to introduce you to Esmeralda Martinez, who will be our workshop facilitator today. Esmeralda, the stage is yours. All right, great, thank you. Um, hi everyone, very excited to be here. And so before uh, we get started, I wanted to tell you a little bit about who I am in my journey to indicative and product. So I'm originally from Southern California. Um, I moved to New York for college. Uh, where I went to NYU Stern School of Business and I studied international business and marketing actually. Uh, but I had always loved technology and I was a huge math nerd all through school. I took math electives for fun in college, which is many people have told me is insane. Um, and fast forwarding a few years, um, I started at Indicative originally as an SDR and have really had the opportunity to grow and learn a lot over the years. And now I head up uh, recently had a project, uh, product and sales engineering here at Indicative. And I'm excited to share with you all today how to build a data driven product roadmap without actually having to do any math yourself, but instead using a product analytics tool uh, like Indicative. So let me actually tell you a little bit about Indicative um, and what we do. So Indicative helps you build better products through analytics. Um, Indicative was designed specifically for the business user. So we typically work with product, marketing, and analyst teams to help them understand how their users are interacting with their digital products or their business. And we are the only product analytics platform that was built to connect directly to your data warehouse, which is typically a company's single source of truth. Um, also, shameless plug, we are hiring for a product intern and a product manager. So stay engaged and stay until the end. <laughs> um, but please feel free to reach out to me on LinkedIn. Um, if you are interested in the role at Indicative. All right, so moving on to the agenda. So today we're going to cover a few different topics um, and we'll cover how a product analytics platform can help you to understand first user flows. How are users flowing in and out of using certain features? Um, the impact that certain features have on engagement and retention and then also how to prioritize and turn these takeaways um, into a product roadmap using data. And so um, definitely, definitely encourage everyone to follow along with me. So this is meant to be an interactive workshop where you can follow along and actually build out the analysis that I'm building out at the same time. So please go to app.indicative.com backslash hash backslash explore demo. Um, and Tara um, should have get posted the link in the chat. So you can just click on that link to go straight to our demo sandbox environment. While I give you guys a few minutes to do or a few seconds to do that, let me explain why behavioral data is important. So to begin, behavioral uh, data is data that shows you who is using your product and what they're doing. What features are they using and how does that relate to engagement with other features or their entire journey? Tracking, tracking, collecting, and most importantly, using this data to derive insights is a vital part of building a modern roadmap. So to actually be able to analyze and operationalize on this, you'll need a product analytic solution like Indicative. It'll make it easier to turn this raw data into something actionable that'll help you do things like visualize your customer journey, identify points of friction, and build and analyze user segments. So before we actually do any analysis, the first thing we need to do is establish our goal. So what are we actually trying to achieve as the company? What is the goal of our roadmap? We have to make sure that we build a roadmap that aligns with our company's goals and objectives. So 
for the purpose of, of this workshop, and if you're already in the demo environment, you'll notice that we're working with a fictitious company called Petbox. A Petbox is dummy data, but it is a co fake company that has a um, it's an e-commerce company. So they have a blog, an app, they sell products online, and they also have a monthly subscription box where you can get pet toys and food delivered on a monthly basis. And so Petbox's main objective is to increase the volume of these conversions to subscribing. So this is critical to understand because let's say the objective was something different. If the objective was to increase the sale of one-off products or to uh, work with affiliates, these would lead to very different questions that we're asking of the data. So now that we've established the goal, let's actually get started. So I'm going to exit out of here and then go over to um, indicative. So if you're following along, you should now be in this demo environment. We'll do this uh, together. So please follow along as I go through this. But if you're in the demo environment, you will see this demo dashboard. So first, let's talk a bit about how the behavioral data is structured inside of a typical product analytics platform. And then we'll go through the various tools that we'll be using and the types of analysis that they are used for. And then we'll dive into a few examples and try to derive some takeaways from this. So first, everyone click on Analyze and then click on the first tool just called Segmentation. And so we're again, we're going to focus first on how is a behavioral data typically structured? And so for that, I'm going to go to the right and click on this data dictionary. So the data dictionary is a really great way for new users to understand and familiarize yourself with what data is, am I actually tracking and what does it really mean? So here we can see we have events. So events are the core data point or the core type of data when talking about product analytics. So events describe user actions. For example, how many, um, is a user doing a page view? Are they clicking? Are they interacting with the feature, downloading the app, and so on. In addition to events, we have event properties. So event properties describe the context of an event. For example, what browser are they using? What's the device type? What's the location? and so on. Next, we have user properties, which describe the user. So maybe we have some demographic information, some subscription information, anything that is associated and describes a particular user are included as user properties. And then lastly, we have user segments. So user segments are actually created in app using a combination of behaviors and characteristics to isolate groups of users that you want to either target via messaging or um, or use in other analysis. And so now that you have these building blocks, these foundational data uh, components, and you understand them, now we're ready to actually get started building out a dashboard. And so I've already created a dashboard that we'll walk through, but let's all actually click on views and then cl click on new dashboard. So we're going to name this dashboard. Maybe we want to name it, you know, workshop product school, right? And so you can create this. And so now you'll have this dashboard um, that we'll use to save all of our new analysis onto. Now, of course, I prepared so I already cheated and I have my full dashboard complete here, um, but I'm going to use this so just to show you at a high level, what are the different types of insights and the types of analyses that we'll be looking at to help inform our product roadmap. And I'm going to delete these takeaways as well, because we'll actually do these together. And so here at the top, we have our journeys analysis. So Journeys is a very powerful tool which allows you to explore and understand 
what is your customer journey before or after a certain behavior? Um, moving further down, we have the traditional funnel analysis, which is great for identifying friction, points of drop off, um, where, is, where are people converting and flowing out? Moving further down, uh, what makes Indicative really unique is the multi-path funnel analysis. So a multi-path funnel analysis allows you to compare and contrast different user flows in a single visualization. Moving further down, we have a segmentation analysis. So segmentation is great for looking at engagement of um, specific features over time or segmenting your user base or creating custom calculations. We also have the frequency tool, which allows you to look at how are users engaging with your application. So for example, how many uh, days a week do people engage? How many weeks a month? to really identify who are your high and low performing segments. And then lastly, we have cohorts. So cohorts are great for helping you analyze engagement, um, activation and retention. So really about understanding how often are users coming back and what is keeping them coming back. And so, now we've covered all of the types of different analyses that we're going to go through. Let's actually get started with the first one. As I, as, as I go through this, please feel free to drop questions in the chat. Happy to you know, answer questions that people have and, and slow down if I need to um, as we go. And then if you see an insight in the data, also please post it in the chat. Um, all right, so we're going to go over to the journeys analysis. And this is where we're going to start. So go over to journeys, make sure that it's clear by clearing it out. And the first question we're going to ask ourselves is, what are the most common paths after opening the app? So I'm actually going to, let's go up here, and I like to name all of my analysis and start off with the question. So what are the most common paths after opening the app? Here you guys will see what a horrible typist I am. Um, and so we're going to start in the query builder. So this area is called the query builder. This is where all of the analysis begins and where all of it is set up. And so to answer the question, we're going to want to put in starting with open app. So I can scroll down and look for opening the app, or I can actually just type in open app. And then I'm going to run this. And so here you will see the most common paths that people are taking um, after they open the app. And so here we can see a Sankey diagram showing what are those most common user flows and uh, the common features or events or actions that they're performing. This is a bit noisy. There's a lot going on here. Let's modify this to only focus on what's most important and reduce some of this noise. So I'm going to go over to this threshold setting. So currently we're looking at um, events that occur over 5% within a given step. Let's increase that threshold, that barrier to 10% instead. So now an event had to represent at least 10% of a step in order to appear. So we'll see our visualization uh, get a little smaller and clearer to understand. The last thing we're going to do is merge repeated steps. Um, notice here that we have many times people are opening the app multiple times in a row. We don't want to see those. Let's merge repeated steps so we can only look at what is coming after, what unique action is coming next. And so now we'll be able to start to look at this analysis. And if you're falling behind, please 
ask me to slow down. Happy to, um, you know, make sure everyone can follow along. And so here we can start to see that after opening the app, the most common action people do is do a site visit. For the purposes of this analysis, I don't actually want to see if people are going to the site. I only want to focus on app engagement. And so I'm going to exclude this event. So click on this bar here for that particular event we want to exclude. In this case, it's site visit. And then you'll see this menu pop up. So I'm going to click on exclude event, and then I'm going to rerun my analysis. And so here we will see the same visualization just now narrowed down to excluding those site visits. And so here we can see now the most common event is opening the app followed by opening the pet cam. So the pet cam is a webcam to watch your pet while you're away. And so it's interesting to see that people are engaging this um, with this product that we have. Next, most common, we can see people are creating a profile. That makes sense after you open the app, you can't do much until you create a profile. And then here we also see people connecting the pet cam. So here we're able to just start to understand what are the ways that people are navigating through my product. Now let's explore what are the most common paths before subscribing. Let's see if there's any insights we can get from that as well. So in the top, let's change our query builder from starting with to ending with so that we look at journeys leading to a particular event. And I can remove my event here. Oops, change this to ending with again. And then let's put in subscribe. So let's put in subscribe. I want to again merge my, merge my repeated steps, change this threshold to 10%, and then I'm going to run this. And so now we want to we're looking at the question of what are the most common common paths prior to subscribing okay and so here we can see how many paths resulted in a subscription immediately before again we see people are opening the app and then we also see emails are being delivered we see email delivered and email clicked. And so maybe there's a specific email that is driving subscriptions and I wanna dig deeper into this. So a lot of this analysis is by identifying an insight and then digging deeper into it. So in this case, we wanna, maybe I wanna know now what types of emails are being delivered that are leading to subscriptions. So I want to look at, is it the newsletter? Is it a one-off campaign? Um, is it a welcome email? What, what is this email? So I can select this event again, and instead of excluding it, I want to expand on this event. So I am going to select that. And so what we're allowed to do is we're allowed now to uh, expand by any of the properties. And so we're going to look for, I already know that part of the data is an uh, email campaign. So I wanna see what is the campaign of the emails that are leading to subscriptions. And so here we can see, we can easily see that the newsletter is the most common by far email campaign that is being sent immediately prior to subscribing. Now, I know that this newsletter only gets sent once a month. Maybe as a takeaway from here, I want to coordinate with marketing to see, one, understand what is the content of the newsletter? Is there something that's encouraging subscriptions that is causing people to subscribe? Maybe I want to send the newsletter instead of monthly instead every two weeks or weekly. 
So let's add that as a takeaway onto our dashboard. So in order to do that, I actually have another tab open. And so let's go to our dashboard and go back to my dashboard. And so here I have this text widget. So on dashboards, in order to add in your own text widget, you can go to new and then text widget. And so here I'm going to add my takeaway. So my takeaway is that newsletter, the newsletter is driving subscriptions, coordinate with marketing. So that, that's just one of my takeaways. Newsletters driving subscription. I should chat with marketing to see if there's anything we can work on together to help drive those subscriptions using that newsletter. So now that we've gotten um, an insight from Journeys, let's move on to the next question we have. So we want to understand in the basic conversion funnel to subscribing, where are there the greatest areas of friction and where are people dropping off? So in order to do that, let's navigate over to the funnel tool. And then let's make sure that's clear as well. And so funnel, again, is great for understanding conversion rates, understanding drop off and points of friction. And so our first use case is understanding drop off. So we're going to put in site visit since we already know uh, site visit specifically for non subscribers. Um, since we know this is where the journey really begins. The next thing we want to do is look for create profile. So you have to create a profile in order to subscribe. So this is a critical step in our journey. And then lastly, we want to put in subscribe. And so I'm going to put in subscribe. And so now what we'll see is a funnel looking at the counts and conversion rates between site visit to subscription. Let's actually go over to our chart area or chart setting and change this from a multipath donut to a stacked bar. And so if I change it to the stacked bar, the stacked bar is really great at understanding that drop off visually and making it very clear where is that point of friction. And so here we can see clearly that between B to C has the highest drop off compared to A to B. So it looks like if people make it to the site, a good portion of them are actually going to create a profile, but about half of them are only going to end up subscribing. Again, this is demo data, but it's just meant to give you an idea of how you would be able to derive insights in order to inform where to focus your product efforts. And so here we can see, okay, clearly between creating a profile and subscribe, we're seeing some drop off. Let's ask some additional questions so that we can understand um, what could be some factors contributing to this low conversion rate? Let's actually name our analysis. Where are people dropping? Okay. And so I did miss this in journeys, but we'll also want to save this to our new dashboard. So in order to do that, we want to click on save as new, select the widget, and then find the dashboard that you created. You can also search for the dashboard name. And so I'm going to want to select the new dashboard I created and then save this. And so now you've saved your first analysis onto the dashboard. And so now let's continue on this example. Let's say we want to see, are there any marketing channels that lead to, um, that lead to a higher or lower conversion rate? So I'm going to go back up to my query builder. I'm going to add a grouping. So adding a grouping will segment your analysis. So in this case, we're going to put in marketing channel. 
and then I'm going to run this. And so now you should see the bar chart area um, converted into a stacked bar where you can easily and visually see where uh, are people coming from and how is that changing as we go through the funnel. But what's really helpful is here down below. And so down below, we have this chart area that is comparing the different counts and conversion rates based off of the channel. And so if I let's sort by this conversion rate here. So here we can see that content actually has the highest rate of conversion compared to email, which has the lowest. So this is telling me that content is actually a large driver of subscriptions. Um, but the count of people that are coming to the site from content is fairly low compared to email. So maybe um, I also know that our content is not available on our app. It's only available on our web. And maybe this is a mistake. So I'm going to add a takeaway that content drives um, subscriptions. Content has a high conversion rate to subscribe. Consider adding blog content in app. If we can identify that the content is valuable and is driving subscriptions, let's find other ways to surface this content to users. If this was a real company, we would also want to identify, for example, you know, what types of content really resonate the most? Are there specific categories or authors um, that are that lead to higher content and higher rate to subscribe? All of these are the types of questions that you should be asking um, as a result of its of a particular insight that you find in the data. All right, so let's now say we let's let's try another grouping and see if there's an, maybe another reason for the conversion rate. So let's put in device type and then I'm going to run this. Oops. Oh, Siri. I didn't get that. Ah. Could you try again? Sorry, opening my C accidentally. Don't even know how I do that. Okay. So um, now we have it grouped by the device type. And so just to recap where I went, I just clicked on marketing channel, replaced it with device type, and then reran my analysis. And so here you can see now the same visualization, but instead now it is grouped by the device type. So if I sort by this conversion rate, I can see that iPhone has the highest rate of conversion with Android tablet being the lowest. So it's iPhone, desktop, and then Android and iPad. And so maybe this is telling me that the iPhone experience is significantly better than the rest of the experiences. If we also look at the counts, we can see that the vast majority of the site visits are on an iPhone. And so that would make sense in terms of dedicating more of our efforts to making the iPhone experience really great. But what we can also see is there's still a good portion of people that are using Android, but the conversion rate is about 15% less almost. So maybe this is an area of opportunity for us to elevate the experience on the Android app to be comparable to the experience on the iPhone app. So let's add this as a takeaway as well. So let's go back, add this takeaway to, um, to audit the Android UX and compare against iPhone. All right, so let's go back to our analysis. And so as a next step, I recall in my journeys analysis, I identified some insights that I want to dig deeper into. Um, I noticed that the pet cam was something that people did pretty frequently um, after opening the app and prior to subscribing. And I want to see, does it have a material impact 
on subscriptions for people that do use the pet box camera. And so I'm going to go over to my query builder again, and let's type in here to, um, to open the pet cam. So I'm gonna select open pet cam and then let's drag it up to after creating a profile. So to do that, we're going to click here, drag it up here. So now we have open pet cam. I also know that you have to open the app in order to subscribe. So I'm going to put in open app and then I'm going to put that above subscribing and sometimes it's a little finicky. So we want to make sure it's in the right order. All right, here we go. And then the last thing I want to do is I want to unpin this to make it an optional step. So if I want to select this pin, unpin it. And so now what we will see um, is a multipath analysis. And actually, one other thing we want to do is we want to change it from the stacked bar visualization to the multipath donut. So this will allow us to look at and compare those two journeys in a very simple visualization. And so here, let's let's dive into the numbers a little bit. Let's spend some time understanding this analysis. Here we can see that there are about 52,000 users who entered the funnel um, by having a site visit over the last seven days. Of these users, about 74% ended up creating a profile after their site visit. Moving further on, we can see how many users did not open the pep cam and then open the app and subscribed. So for those that did not open the pep cam, our conversion rate is about 20%. If I toggle over to those, let's so if you highlight this this other path here, it will highlight the other path. And so now we can see 20%, it more than doubled to 54%. It almost tripled in conversion rate. And so this is telling me that actually using and engaging with the pet cam product does drive subscriptions. And so um, I want to add this as a takeaway. You know, maybe I want to have a campaign with marketing to um, to promote the pet cam. Maybe I want to send some messaging specifically to people who are using the pet cam with um, send them some messaging to encourage them to subscribe since they're prime for subscribing. Um, maybe I want to, um, you know, kind of dig deeper into it and see if there are other features that have a similar impact on conversion. So there's a lot of different directions we can go from here. But for this takeaway, let's just add a takeaway that the pet cam does drive subscriptions. So pet cam drives subscriptions, maybe work with marketing and revisit in app UI in relation to the pet cam. And so um, to expand on this, let's do one more thing in the funnel analysis. So let's say I also, pet, pet, uh, pet Box is an international organization, and I want to see if there are specific regions or specific countries where we are more successful in than others. And so for that, I am going to now switch this to look at the country. So if I group by the country and then I run this, now we will see, and then let's also change this. We only want to look at the top five countries. All right. And so here we can see um, down below that the lowest conversion rate is the US. So even though the US has the highest count of users, it has the lowest conversion rate of these top five countries. 
And we can see that the highest conversion rates are actually Great Britain and Turkey. And so maybe this is telling me that the US is a saturated market. Maybe there's a lot of competition in the US, but Great Britain and Turkey don't have as much competition in our space. And maybe we should dedicate some resources to have camp to run more campaigns in these countries. Or maybe right now our app only supports English. Maybe we also want to support Turkish or support other languages um, so that we can uh take this opportunity and and expand on it so let's add that as a takeaway as well so we want to work with marketing on international campaigns and we also want to consider support consider support for multiple languages and time zones all right and so as you can see so far there are a, a huge variety of insights that you can take away from the data and the more analysis you do the more information you're going to get um, and it can be really interesting and really fun so now let's take a look at the next example. So let's look at segmentation and identify interesting segments of opportunity. So let's click on analyze and then segmentation. And so as we go here, please feel free to post questions in the chat. Um, love, love questions. All right. And so here we have our blank slate again in the segmentation tool. You may have noticed that the query builder there are, it looks very familiar as you go from tool to tool. So this is designed so that it's easy once you understand the components of how to build an analysis, you can use various tools and get different types of information. So we're going to focus on what is engagement with pet cam based on subscription status hey, so, uh, yes quickly before you move the segmentation we did have a question about how you got this data into here yes definitely um great okay so this particular data is dummy data but in terms of the types of integrations that we have so there are a few different ways to get data into a product analytics tool um, there's the traditional third party partners like segment or snowplow which are designed for tracking this behavioral and event data we also have our own sdks or api um, and then most importantly we have our data warehouse integrations so indicative is the only platform that was designed to connect to your data warehouse so that would be you know, our third method of integration um, so we can integrate for example with like s3 redshift snowflake and and others um every i will last thing i'll say here is every customer's data is unique and so we can come integrate with multiple different sources and in indicative for the end user, it will seamlessly appear as a, a single data set and a single profile of the user. And if you have any other questions about integration or how to get your data in here, you can definitely sign up for a free account or you can message me on, on LinkedIn and I'll be happy to help you out. All right, great. Um, okay, so to go back to the segmentation example. Um, let's see if there are <laughs> any areas of opportunity um, with this analysis. So we're going to put in open pet cam. And so we put in open pet cam and let's just plot this. And so here we'll be able to see a simple line chart showing um, what are the different um, how many times a day are people opening our pet cam? I always like to turn data labels on so I don't have to kind of look at the y axis. 
So to do that, I can click on this and then turn data labels on. So I can now easily see what are the counts alongside the chart. So let's expand this date range a bit and let's add in uh, grouping this by the subscription type. So let's change last seven days. Let's do last 90 days. And then let's group by here, group by, let's search for subscription and put in subscription plan. And so this is going to be looking at um, engagement with the pet cam based off of the subscription plan. And so here we can very clearly actually see before even looking at the subscription plan that the most engagement happens between Sunday to Thursday. So maybe this is telling me that this is when people are typically um, away from home meaning they're using, they're engaging with their pet cam to look at their pet more often because they're not home versus maybe Friday, Saturday or the weekend, they're home more often and therefore aren't really using that pet cam nearly as much. So that's already one very interesting insight. Maybe I wanna coordinate my marketing efforts based off of these dates and kind of test to see, is it better to um, send them messages when they are, when they're not using the pet cam? And so now let's actually kind of normalize this data a little bit. And instead of daily, let's click on daily and change this to weekly. So now we're going to look at this on a weekly basis and run that. And so let's turn our data labels on as well. And let's do it for all of the series here. And so here we can very quickly and easily see that the majority of the users of the pet cam actually don't have a subscription plan. So we've already identified that people who do open the pet cam have a higher likelihood to subscribe. So this is looks like a huge opportunity for us to target these non-subscribers, maybe with some messaging to encourage them to subscribe. And so you can continue to slice and dice the data to see, are there those areas of opportunity to increase those subscriptions? Um, are there other things to look at like marketing channel, device type, um, you know, time of day? There's an unlimited amount of ways to slice and dice the data that will help you to identify um, how to inform your product roadmap. So let's add that takeaway here. And so the takeaway was we want to target uh, non, non subscribers who engage with pet cam. And so let's say we want to, you know, in order to engage with them, I want to create a user segment. So I'll go to create user segment. I want to create it from the entire series so we get that full 90 days of users. And then I want to save my, I want to save this user segment. So first I have to name it. So let's actually name it pet cam pet cam, yeah, pet cam non subscribers non subs. Let's add a category. Let's let's categorize this by marketing since we know we're going to coordinate with marketing on this initiative. And then let's keep the setting as dynamic. What dynamic will do is it will update the segment on a daily basis so that you can continuously see which people are flowing in and out of this particular segment. So I will save this. And so now you'll see this user segment will show up alongside of your other user segments in our data dictionary. Um, all right. And so last thing here, keep forgetting to point this out, put save your analysis to your dashboard. So we'll wanna save this as a widget and then we'll wanna select that dashboard. So it is the workshop product school dashboard, save it. So now we've memorialized this insight inside of our dashboard. So let's look at one more example. So the last analysis tool um, that we haven't covered is cohort. And so let's clear that. So we've, you know, we've already identified um, a lot of really great insights and have a lot of key takeaways. One of the things we also noticed 
was that uh, people are using the blog. And so let's see, or <laughs> people are engaging with their content, right? Content was a the highest conversion rate in terms of marketing channel. So let's look at how soon after people engage with our blog, are they subscribing? So let's define my cohort. So these are who I'm looking to analyze as blog. So blog view. And then my target behavior, in this case, my target behavior is uh, subscribe. Subscribe. And then I'm going to run this. And so let's run this. And here, what we will see is a cohort analysis looking at um, blog view to subscribe. So let me spend a minute to explain what this is looking at. This is saying that over the last 30 days, 100,000 users had a blog view. Of these users, four point, or of these users, 43% ended up subscribing within the first 24 hours. Again, this is dummy data. These would be great conversion rates. <laughs> um, but this is how you can identify when are people subscribing? And it looks like, you know, even day one, day two, up until kind of the first week, have a pretty good conversion rate in terms of still we get some stragglers subscribing. Then after day nine, it kind of dips down to below 1%. So this is telling me I have really the first 24 hours are critical, but the first week is really important in terms of um, continuing to engage these blog viewers before they forget about us. And so maybe now I want to revisit my content, visit, revisit what the UI looks like, what the UX is for specifically for our blog content and encourage more email collection. Um, maybe I want to have a call out for the blog on, on the side. But main point is here, let's dig deeper into what that blog experience looks like now that we've identified this is a good area of opportunity. So let's go over to the blog and then put this here. So let's see, revisit blog UI. Okay, great. So now we have a lot of great takeaways. Let's also save this to our dashboard here. And so let's save this product school dashboard. And this should be okay. And so here, um, now we have a lot of insights and, and analysis saved into our dashboard. And I'm going to revisit our takeaways. So here we can see um, all of the takeaways that we put together now. And the next step is to review our takeaways and see how they can be turned into a product roadmap, objectives, and strategy. And so if we go back to our company goal, our company goal was increased subscriptions. And so here are some insights that we can use to, in furtherance of that goal. Some of this includes coordinating with marketing. So we probably want to schedule a meeting with marketing to go through what we found and see if there's anything we can work together on. We also have some pretty great takeaways about changes we want to make to the product to make subscriptions more front and center and to encourage those behaviors that we already know lead to subscriptions. And so we can now take these takeaways and derive some action items like talk to marketing, revisit the UI for the blog, you know, consider international language support and time zone support. Um, and we can use that to turn, uh, to create a data-driven, data-focused product roadmap. So that is all I planned on walking through today. And so let's just put in kind of this last slide happy to answer any questions, please post them in the chat. Um, just to leave you with a few things, you can register for a free account. Um, you can go to our website, you can go to this link. Um, and then also, again, we're hiring for a product intern and a product manager. So feel free to email me at this address um, or to find me on LinkedIn and send me a message if you are interested or know anybody that would be interested. 
um, I'm the person to talk to. So please, please <laughs> come to me if you're interested. Um, so, and then also, if you enjoyed this workshop, we're having our next workshop at the end of November on November 30th at the same time. And that workshop will be about how to measure the success of new feature releases. And so I'll just hang on and see if there are any questions here in the chat. And if not, we will uh, end this in a few minutes. All right. Okay, guys. Well, thank you everyone for coming. Um, if you have any questions again, please feel free to reach out to me. Um, and uh, have a great rest of your day.